On today's guide, Doing It Yourself, our really useful guide to DIY will have you improving your home in no time. Okay, say ya. Uh... Your health. What to do if you fall ill. Handy hints on knowing what to say to your doctor or pharmacist and how to read medicine labels. And writing a check. Handy hints for filling them in. Gobbledygook, it's everywhere these days. Often forms and official documents are full of legalese, jargon and incomprehensible sentences that can baffle even the most proficient readers. Plain English is a way of producing written material so that you write clearly, accurately and concisely because so often we come across writing that's unclear, inaccurate and simply confusing. Some manuals are infuriatingly complicated and aren't written well at all. Flat pack furniture and computer manuals must be top of the stress list when it comes to impossible language and confusing diagrams. But if you're thinking of doing a spot of DIY, this might help. Meet Andy. He's just moved into a new flat and doesn't like the colour of his walls. Looks like a spot of DIY is in order. Meet Craig, an expert on all matters regarding DIY. If you're not sure about how to solve a certain DIY job or what tools and materials you may need, you should always visit a local hardware store where you'll receive expert advice. Take a look through your golden pages to find out where your nearest store is located. You can also find the information on the internet, like the address and a map showing you directions to the nearest store. When you first arrive in the store, you might find it a little daunting at first. But don't worry, most hardware stores nowadays have leaflets which will help solve your DIY problems. Once you've found a leaflet to fit your problem, read through it and identify what you need to buy and where it can be found within the store. For painting indoors, you will need a dust sheet, protective gloves, safety goggles, a paint kettle, a paintbrush, a roller, paint tray and a tub. These items can be found in the paint aisle. If you are having problems finding certain products or aisles, you can always ask at the customer service desk. Okay. Excuse me, do you know where um, the painting aisle is? Yeah, if you go just down here, it's uh, on your right hand side on aisle 7. Thank you. No problem, thank, thank you. you. Once you've found the right oil, all you need now is to follow the shelf and head labels to find the right components. Each aisle is named. For example, in the decorating aisle, you will find painting materials. If you're still having difficulties, you can ask a member of staff. They'll be happy to help. I can help. So what do we need? Paint. A paintbrush. A paint kettle. A dust sheet. A roller. And a paint tray. Once you've found what you're looking for, all you have to do now is pay for them. Thanks, good morning. Now that's 13 euros, please. Thank you. The bill is 13 euro. You handed over 20 euro. So you should have gotten back 7 euro. Thank well, you. Thank you very Thanks much. A lot. Enjoy your day. Enjoy bye bye. Now that you know where to find the right equipment and information, your DIY problems should be a thing of the past. So now you know where to buy the materials and where to get the advice, there's nothing stopping you. So, get painting.
Well, we're joined today by Clodagh McCarthy, who's playing English coordinator for NALA and who's going to tell us a little bit more about the gobbledygook that surrounds us. And we're also joined by Linda Cook from Dublin, who recently went back to learning. Clodagh, first of all, starting off with you, what is plain English? Well, plain English, it's a way of presenting information to make it clear enough for the reader to understand after a first reading and to act on it then if they want to. Uh, it's about using clear language clearly and using short sentences, everyday words, but also about laying out your information clearly, not having very long paragraphs or too many words. So it, it makes a lot of sense. When did the, this start in Ireland? Uh, I suppose it's, it has started since the 1990s. Various organisations have started to use it. Um, NALA was contacted um, around 2000, 2001 uh, to start making information clearer for different, say, hospitals and different organisations. Yeah. To help them understand how to make information for patients simpler, for example. That's it, because many people were working with patients who maybe weren't clear about the information they were being given and they wanted advice then on how to make the information clearer mm. for them. I remember a, a few years ago coming across examples that were so farcical and ridiculous that they just made people laugh like a, a bouncer outside a nightclub would be an admissions consultant. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, but there is it's a serious side to it, isn't there, when people find it difficult to understand what's going on, like in banks and hospitals. Yeah, absolutely. It, it presents enormous challenges for people if they can't give, say, informed consent to surgery or if they don't understand the terms in the contract when they're taking out a loan, there can be very significant consequences. Like what? Well, for example, people may, may fall back in arrears when it comes to making payments. They may not understand the amount of interest they owe. Um, when it comes to surgery, they may, there are, there are, we were aware of stories of people who had surgery, weren't entirely sure what exactly was done, and it was only afterwards that they realised exactly what, what was performed on them. OK. Well, you've brought in a few examples of um, how this gobbledygook can then be made clear and simple. Yeah. Um, let's have a look. So this is something that's actually out there. If there are any points on which you require explanation or further particulars, we shall be glad to furnish such additional details as may be required by telephone. Means, okay. if you have any questions, please ring. <laughs> OK, gobbledygook indeed. Next one. Should a predicament arise during the course of your stay, please refer to regional head of services, blah, blah, blah. What they want to say is, if you have a problem, ask the caretaker. That perfectly illustrates what plain English is about. Linda, have you come across situations as well where something is gobbledygook and it needn't be? Yes, yeah, sometimes I come across my bank statements and that, yeah. that I don't understand them. And there's pages of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, and it just goes on and on. Yeah, It's off-putting, isn't it? Yeah. Because you just you don't even want to read it then? No, you don't. You just kind of throw it in and you just say, well... Just, I just basically go by my balance, what's in my balance, I go by that and I don't care what's on the Straight line to that. the last line. Yeah. <laughs> you found a few examples as well, didn't you? Yes, I did. Let's have a look. We've got here, uh, wow, retailers should satisfy themselves with the bona fides of any supplier. Means, retailers should make sure they deal with genuine suppliers. OK, that's much more easy to understand, <laughs> isn't it? And your last one, Linda. Upon any such default, at any time thereafter, a secured party may declare, I, I'm already lost. What do they want to say? If I break any of my promises in this document, you can demand that I immediately pay all that I owe. That's fair enough, isn't it? That's simple. It's really important to get it clear. Are companies glad that Nala is doing this? They are, yeah. We've had uh, many kind of inquiries for assistance um, to, to help them with their documents and companies are also asking us to train their staff to make their information clearer. I think what companies want to do is to reach their customers more quickly and to make sure that their writing is actually effective and that they're using their time and their staff effectively to write the information. So the first thing they have to get clear is the language and as we saw there, take a page of gobbledygook and turn it into one simple sentence. What about fonts, Clodagh, the type of letters, the style of letters used? Is that important too? It is, yeah. What we would recommend is a very clear font, something like Arial or Times New Roman, which people would often use for their letters. Some of them can be very fussy. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'd, we'd, we'd advise steering clear of that and steering clear of any kind of italics or 
too with too many fancy fonts in one in one document can be very distracting. So we'd steer clear of those. Okay. Well, very often we encounter situations where it's better to write a check rather than pay by cash or credit card. There's a lot of information on a check, though. Much of it useful to you, like your bank sort code, your account number, and the check number. Of course, checks require us to know how to fill them out properly. Here are a few pointers. It's 125 of this. Pay by you later. Yep, that's yeah. fine. Cheers. There are lots of different ways to pay for what we buy. Can I pay by credit card? Can I pay by check? Yep, that's fine. Cheers. You can think of a check as a simple form which you use to give someone money from your bank account. Checks from different banks look different, but as Aidan Power, marketing manager with the EBS, explains, they usually have the same type of information already printed on them. The layout of checks can vary, um, but really you have an, a certain number of, um, I suppose, items that are pre-printed on a check. One is the check number, um, and that's literally, there are so many checks within a checkbook, and it's, it's literally just the number of the check that you've actually written. The second thing is the actual account number of the person who owns the checkbook. The third item um, would be the account name, and that's the name of the person who actually owns the account and the checkbook. You have to fill in certain information on the cheque yourself. When you fill in a cheque, you write the name of the person or company you're paying the money to here. The amount, €125, Euro, goes here, in numbers. The euro symbol is already on the cheque, so you don't have to write it in. If there are no cents, it's better to put a dash and zero zero so that no one can add on extra numbers. You also write the amount in words. 125 euro. Writing only on a cheque is really another form of security for you. Um, it's to prevent, I suppose, fraud um, more so than anything else. Um, and it also tells the bank that that is the exact amount of money that they can actually give out um, on the actual cheque that is handed over to them. It's important to put in the date that you are writing the cheque and don't forget to sign it. Another thing you can do is cross a cheque. To cross a cheque is really a safeguard um, for you and it's another form of security. There's two ways of crossing a cheque. Um, there's a general crossing, um, which is just two parallel lines that go across the cheque. But you can further safeguard a cheque by actually putting account payee only. And that means the cheque can only actually be paid into the account of the person named on the cheque. It's always a good idea as well to actually fill in the stub of the cheque um, and that's usually the piece that um, is left in the cheque book after you hand the cheque over and that's really to keep a record for yourself um, that you actually pay the cheque out. There you go. That's great, thank you. You may need to show your cheque card to show how much your bank is willing to guarantee. These days, when there are so many ways to pay, is there still a place for cheques? No, yeah, thank you. Sir. Cheers, thanks well. There is still a place for cheques today. Um, very often there's many examples of places that actually won't accept anything other than a cheque. So for example, sometimes it's easier to pay the plumber or a builder or tradespeople, for instance, with cheques because they won't have credit card um, facilities to be able to accept a credit card. And it's also safer then as well in terms of carrying um, a chequebook around on yourself as opposed to carrying large sums of cash. Oh, there you go. Cheers. Thanks a lot.